Hello everyone and welcome. This is Smackdown live from the SAP Center in San Jose, California. The road to King of the Ring continues on and we look forward to plenty more action coming our way for it tonight. Our main event of the evening. What a main event it's going to be as well. Limitless Keith Lee against the Hangman himself. Keith Lee, Adam Page, tonight. But while that is to come, we are kicking things off with a tag team match that, in my opinion, could have main evented this show because it is two of the biggest tag teams there are. First off, the trendsetters. The men who set the path for everyone to walk down the most successful tag team in company history. The Good Brothers, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. The men who claimed they are fifth tag team title reign last year here on SmackDown. And now they're gonna go up against the current SmackDown tag team champions. It is the Good Brothers versus the Saviors to get us underway here on this edition of SmackDown. Well, welcome to you all, wherever you are tuning in from. Plenty to look forward to here tonight on this, what will be a big edition of the Blue Brand. We have this to look forward to. Tommaso Ciampa, we've been told, is in the building and he will be responding to the end of SmackDown last week. With the savior himself, Ricochet, declared his pick for WrestleMania. It will be Tommaso Ciampa versus Ricochet for the WWE Championship. And here come his followers. Bathed in gold. And accompanied by the golden savior himself. The Intercontinental Champion, Kota Ibushi, leads out the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Drew Gulak. Roderick Strong, the saviors who claim the titles at TLC from the Dangerous Alliance, and now go up against the most successful tag team there has ever been within this company. I mean, what do you say against them? This is a big, big, big match for the Saviors to prove themselves as tag team champions. It is not like they've got a... You know, the, the SmackDown tag team division is tough. There's no doubt about it. But these guys are even tougher than that. These guys are above just being on a brand. These guys, in a way, are what tag team wrestling has become. They laid the foundations for it. And they have dominated their way to everything. Wherever they have been, whatever brand they have been on, they have claimed and shown themselves to be one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Do I have a little bit of bias towards the Good Brothers? Absolutely. But at the same time, you can't deny five tag team title rings tell the story. It is gonna be a big, big, big match for Strong and Gulak here this evening try and prove themselves as worthy tag team champions against the men who really set the benchmark for not only being a tag team the tag team champions at that so here we go Carl Anderson and Roderick Strong get going here as I said earlier though folks Tommaso Ciampa will be here at some point this evening responding to Ricochet's challenge at the end of Smackdown last, e uh, last week we also have Asuka and Nikki Cross going one on one Continuing on their uh, rivalry, if you want to call it that, from um, the Royal Rumble, which of course ended in both of them being eliminated at the same time. And the fight continued on backstage even after their eliminations. Okay, yeah, nice combination there from Roderick Strong. Comes in with a lariat, taking Carl Anson off his feet. Now clutch being applied here, nicely done here, locked in here on Carl Anderson, middle of the ring, first real attempt of anything in the match here, submission or pin based wise, Carl Anderson will break his way out of it, and of course ladies and gentlemen, we have, as was announced on the centre of the universe last week, look out to the German suplex cover by Carl Anderson, it's a two count on one after the tag team champions, we will be seeing Jay White 
taking on Sami Zayn as well later on this evening. Plenty to look forward to on this edition of SmackDown as the road to WrestleMania and the road to King of the Ring is certainly hotting up as Luke Gallows is now legal in this contest and immediately Strong looks to try and take out the big tree trunk legs of Luke Gallows and gets in a big knee in the face as well. Took Gallows down to one knee there, really rocked him. Gallows sent into the turnbuckle. Tag mate, here we go, Gulak is legal now. Tag team offense incoming, double back elbows and Gallows is taken off his feet there. Nothing flashy but damn effective from the tag team champions. The Intercontinental Champion out with them, the Royal Rumble winner and number one contender to the WWE Championship. It seems not in the building here tonight, wherever he may be. I'm sure he is watching his saviors in action right now and I'm sure he will be quite closely pressed to the TV when Tommaso Ciampa gives his reply to Ricochet. Drew Gulak almost went through the ropes there. Just bounced off them. A nasty, nasty landing for him, no doubt about it. And Luke Gallows is firmly in control now. Splashes down on the much smaller frame of Gulak, but the rope's there to save him. In the corner, went for a running splash, I believe. Gulak got the elbow. Look at that lariat. Gallows stays on his feet, not once but twice. But oh, what a minute. What tenacity there from Drew Gulak. Couldn't get him to go down when they were face to face. But how about from behind, back of the neck. Takes her down with that lariat. Now an ankle lock. An ankle lock targeting the big legs of Luke Gallows. Targeting away at the legs. You're trying to get him to tap out. Can he secure a massive submission victory over one of the greatest tag teams there has ever been? Gallows breaks his way out. This is with the lariat as well. Gulak into the gut now. Big boo. And Gallows still stays up on his feet. Oh, one for good measure. Gallows almost kicking the head off of the savior there. The savior submissions as he's been come to know by Ricochet. Here we go. Tandem tag team offense with a big splash to finish it off. The Boston Crab being applied after it as well. Carl Anderson trying to get Drew Gulak to tap out now. But Gulak will certainly know his way out of a number of submission holds. And that's another one there that he can add his name on to. Into the corner now. Tag made. Strong legal once again here. Backbreaker. This. Right up the signature playbook of the Saviors. Backbreaker into a suplex. Cover made by Roderick Strong, right in front of Gallows. The shoulders are up in time from Carl Anderson. It's been a rather competitive uh, tag team match here to get us going on SmackDown. Both teams trying to get the upper hand on the other. And Carl Anderson may have just done that with a brutal running power bomb there on Roderick Strong. And boy, does he know that it was a good one at that as well. Anderson now into the turnbuckle. Are we going to see the tag made into Gallows? Yes, we are. Gallows is legal. Neither team really able to stop the tag being made here in this contest. Double axe handle down onto the back now. In the 300 plus pound frame of Luke Gallows. This is a real benchmark match for the Saviors. You can see that they, they are in some ways struggling. This wasn't as easy. They knew this wasn't going to be an easy one, that's for certain. And the Saviors are certainly finding themselves arguably in a worse than worse position as the match goes on. But Strong fighting on their knee in the gut to Gallows, kicking the gut after. Chopped him down to one knee. What can Roderick Strong do here? Ah, oh, smart there. Smart to go after the leg. Smart to target the legs of Gallows once again. Take him out from underneath him, trying to neutralize Luke Gallows the best they can. Still feels that the Saviors are trying to come up with a game plan here as best as they can. Tag is made. Here we go now. Roderick Strong is tags out to Gulak. Gulak and Strong in combination. Double suplex there, and Gallows goes down. But Gallows 
crawling around, has his senses and makes the tag into Machine Gun. Carl Anderson is legal. Drop kick. Gulak goes down. Back up to his feet. Right hand. Carl Anderson. Look at that. Fire up here onto the Saviors. Drop kick again. Gulak not only goes down, but he's busted open. Gulak in big trouble. Drop kick off the rope. That could be all she wrote. Carl Anderson hooks the leg to finish this off. Oh, Roderick Strong is there in time now to make the save. Strong makes the save where Gulak may have been down for good. And now Roderick Strong is going to have to be hoping that Gulak can find his wits about him. And he does. Gulak, forearm in the turnbuckle we go. Tag going to be made here. Yes, there will be an urgent tag needed at that one. Beautiful. Idea there from the Saviors. Strong came charging in with that drop kick. And we're back to how it started in this matchup now between Carl Anderson and Roderick Strong. Strong puts it up on the top rope. Look at this from Roderick Strong now. Threw him off on the top rope. Dumped him down there on the back. Roderick Strong, he's lighting him up here into a beautiful face buster. Roderick Strong could be looking to finish this off right here, right now. He's dragging Carl Anderson into place. He is looking to bring an end to the Good Brothers here this evening. What the... What in the... San Jose rises to their feet. The Black Heart, the Black Heart. Tommaso Chaffery waiting. With Goldie in hand, Ciampa walking towards the ring. What is going on here? Strong face to face with Ciampa. Oh, but Ciampa ain't going to be allowed to go up that further here. Face to face with the golden savior himself, Ibushi. Ciampa face to face, strong looking on. The saviors are bewildered. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Gulak is down on the outside now. Carl Anderson can't stand. Can't stand from Carl Anderson. Covers Roderick Strong. The Good Brothers have beaten the tag team champions. It looked as if the Roderick Strong might have been about to end it. But Tommaso Ciampa just cost the saviors to this evening. Ciampa did not say a word, but his actions spoke loud and clear. The Blackheart cost the saviors. Very, very interesting way to get us underway here so far in this edition of SmackDown. The Good Brothers knocked off the tag team champions, but give a major assist towards the WWE champion himself. That will be his reply to Ricochet declaring that he wants to face him for the title. If you want to do that, then fine. I will get in your business. Right now, folks, it is time for Paradigm. 
Damian Priest coming towards the ring here. They go one on one against Kurt Hawkins. Good luck to Hawkins on that one. But here come Priest, uh, company with Jackson Riker. Of course, we know these two men make up the group known as Paradigm. Their leader, John Moxley, not here this evening as a result of the assault on him last week by the WWE Champion himself, Tommaso Ciampa, nearly kicking the head of Moxley into the ring pole. If it wasn't for Ricochet inadvertently coming to the aid there and saving Moxley from having his boot, from having his head caved in by Tommaso Ciampa's boot. So Moxley though not here this evening, but he is going to be watching on and Priest will be accompanied here. Of course, Damian Priest had a part to play in last week's main event as well. When Apollo Crews made his way out and it looked as if Crews and Moxley were about to go to battle with one another. Moxley pulled the trigger and that was to get Damian Priest to make sure that Crews didn't interfere. Dragged Apollo Crews to the back and made sure that he stayed out of trouble within his main event with Kevin Owens. So Priest certainly will be on the eyes of Apollo Crews and the manager of the Bounty Hunter as well. And Booker T. But right now for Damian Priest, all that matters is getting in the ring with Kurt Hawkins here and I presume giving him a hard time. I don't think we're surprised one bit by the way that this one's going to be getting started here. Look at Priest with a huge elevated power bomb. Dumped him down there with no remorse whatsoever. But why would Priest have any? This is all about sending a message here for Damian Priest for, well, for everything really. What Paradigm can be, what he can be. Remember, this was the man who last year pretty much brought about the end of sanity in his own way. The numbers started to whittle away and then Priest was the one who kind of pulled the rug from underneath it all. He was the one who really brought it all to an end. And now he's here with Paradigm and they seem to be a tight-knit unit thus far, as was illustrated by last week. With Priest making sure to be at the right place at the right time when Apollo Crews attempted to make his... Uh, his appearance felt, cover made here by Priest. They're gonna put away Kurt Hawkins off of that power bomb. Oh no. Letting Hawkins know that ain't gonna be the case. There's plenty more where that came from. And it's only gonna get worse. Reverse choke slam. Face first into the mat as Jackson Riker looks on there. Into position, gets Damian Priest, discus big boots. And he will set him up into place. And the referee, Jessica Carr, better get ready to count to 100. The reckoning! Twist and snap into the mat. And with it, went Kurt Hawkins' body. Message sent. Priest, your comfortable winner here this evening on SmackDown. No doubt about it. Moxley might not be here this evening, but the message is sent from Paradigm. The fight continues on. And they certainly have their target set. Whatever and whoever they may well be. Oh, wait a minute! Talk of the bounty hunter! And here comes his agent, Booker T, coming out here this evening! And Booker T sending a rather firm message so far to Damian Priest. He may have been looking out for Moxley, but it seems as if that's labelled him in a spot of trouble. Oh, 
Booker T sending a warning there to all three members of Paradigm. If you want to stand with Moxley, fine with him. But if you want to stand with him, you'll be buried with him. Courtesy of the bounty hunter himself. Priest and Riker look on as Booker T has firmly sent this message here. It is clear where the battle lines have been drawn. And it will be with all of Paradigm against the bounty hunter himself. Very, very interesting indeed. Plenty to discuss there from the Heartbreak Kid, the SmackDown general manager himself. Having just seen what happens, it seems as if he does want to bring about an end to what has gone on between Moxley and Cruz over the recent weeks and near months. And on top of that, well, we're going to have a battle royal next week. The competitors to be announced at a later date. And well, it wasn't really an announcement made by Shawn Michaels, but they certainly made the announcement themselves. The Good Brothers walking in to the office of the general manager. Who knows where that one will lead, but we know where this one's going to go here this evening between these two men. It is Sami Zayn, one-on-one -on -one against Jay White. We all saw what happened last week on SmackDown. Zayn and Robert Roode were scheduled to go one-on-one, -on -one, and that ended almost as soon as it began with Jay White assaulting both men, laying out Sami Zayn in the ring and Robert Roode on the outside and declaring that that was a statement message towards the Rainmaker himself, Kazuchika Okada. Who's really coming out to play here for this man? He may not have been successful at the Royal Rumble, but that has not made him any less dangerous any less of the man that we have come to know as the switchblade Jay White heading towards the ring here look with focus and intent towards Sami Zayn and whatever is in front of him as well White said to Okada last week that I am still standing, but soon you won't be. You will be down for good. While the WWE Championship may not be around Jay White's waist, there is certainly a chance for so much more than that. There is certainly a chance for him to claim all the glory 
over being the man to take out the Rainmaker. Many have tried, none have succeeded. Jay White, if there's anyone who can come up with a cunning plan, if there's anyone who can be sadistic enough to make it work, it would be the Switchblade. Sami Zayn paces around on the outside. Here is the boost. Almost drowning at the theme of the Jay White here. They're saving. We will get ready to see what will happen when White and Zane do battle here this evening. Bell rings and we are underway between these two men. White walking into the ring. Oh, Sammy Zayn! Zane has not got to play here this evening. Zane wants revenge for the Blade Runner. And he was inflicted with last week on SmackDown. And he is going straight after the Switchblade to achieve it here this evening. Sammy Zayn exploding out of the gates onto the former Intercontinental Champion. Take a look at this snap from Sami Zayn. Look out, here has the arm. Oh, Jay White though coming up with a forearm counter there. And now, a flurry. A quick combination there takes Sami Zayn down at a clubbing blow on the back and Zayn off his feet. And look at that. The ego from this man. But Sami Zayn, oh, comes right back with a drop kick there. Jay White effectively. Walking into that one, and Sami Zayn has a chance to keep on going here. Spilling Jay White to the outside. And now here we go outside of the ring. Sami Zayn lining himself up here into the barricade. Goes Jay White. Sami Zayn with a lot of aggression here. Being displayed. Oh, wait a minute. Cannabis by Jay White. Sami Zayn looked to be the one sending White into the oh into the floor there, but instead he's getting sent into the ring pole. That's the car counting away here and oh. Jay White just restarting the count so he can continue inflicting the punishment on a Sami Zayn on the outside there. Just throws him away. And gets back in the ring now. Jay White as sadistic and as as ever, when it comes to playing his mind games, looks at him, San Jose, grab for Sami Zayn, comes charging back into the ring. And Jay White goes down after it as well. Here we go, Sami Zayn, full head of steam, walk the ropes, DDT! Beautifully done as well, cover from Zayn. Oh, but White gets the shoulder up in time at two. Big offense though from Sami Zayn, he needs to try and stay on Jay White here as best he can. Right hand, turns him around, Dragon Suplex, gets all of it. There's the bridge, is it enough to finish off Jay White here this evening? It's another two count over the former Intercontinental Champion. Sami Zayn here, he wants the glory, he wants revenge for last week. Everything to do with Okada and Jay White is irrelevant to him. What matters to him is his match was Throwing out the window courtesy of this man and then he was laid out in the ring with a Blade Runner. Robert Roode along with it as well. For Sami Zayn, it is in the same way as it was for Kazuchika Okada. It's about revenge. What a dragon suplex that was there from Jay White who now retakes control in this contest. Big kick in the back and a neck crank follows up as well. Zayn down to the mat here, and he is in trouble. He is feeling the pain as here we go. Now, Dragon Sleeper being applied by Jay White here. Dragon Sleeper locked in, head around, sorry, uh, arm around the head there of Sami Zayn, not under the neck. Squeeze his head almost. Zayn, look out here. Small package, rolls up Jay White here. Could he get the upset win this way? No, a kick out at one there from the Switchblade. But Sami Zayn sees the opening in front of him. He's staying on him here. Or not to be. Canamade there by Jay White. And White, he's going to bring him in. Has him. Kiwi Crusher. Cover is made by Jay White. Sami Zayn kicks out at two, though. And an emphatic kick out at that. But a big move from Jay White. Sami Zayn really needs to try and come back here. And indeed he will. Kick into the gut. Drop kick takes Jay White down. Look at this now, White rolling out of the 
to the outside again, trying to catch his breath, but Sami Zayn will not allow that to happen. Over the top rope, half hat suplex onto the outside. Some aggression has piled up into Zayn now, and Jay White is feeling it. Zayn, top rope, willing to take a big risk. Will it pay off? Yeah. Swan done, no. Jay White moved out of the way. White evaded the swan done, and now Blade Runner victory for the Switchblade. As soon as Zane found light, as soon as Zane found some fire in him, Jay White was there to snuff the flame firmly out of him and finish him off right there and then. Revenge was on the mind of Sami Zayn. Switchblade didn't care. Jay White, your winner here this evening on SmackDown. Job well done for him. Wait a minute, come on, the match is done. The match is over and done with you. He's just throwing Sami Zayn back into the ring here. Zayn put up a hard fight, but he doesn't know where he is. No, 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 no. No, Jay White, no, don't do this. Do not do this, Jay. He's got a chair in hand here. Jay White is going to look to try and maim Sami Zayn here. This is not the way he needs to go. Hang on, Robert Roode, Roode, charging towards the ring. Robert Roode. Charged into the ring and comes to the aid of Sami Zayn. Jay White dumping the chair down there and getting out of here. A big save made there by Robert Roode and the switchblade in one bit happy about it either. Roode and Zayn with their eyes locked. Onto the switchblade and Roode trying to call out Jay White. You're calling him a coward. The White ain't listening. White is done for the day almost. What he wanted to have happen, it failed. And Robert Roode is laying into the switchblade here. And San Jose is all for it. Robert Roode letting him know that if Okada doesn't get to the switchblade first, Robert Roode will. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have been waiting for an update, and finally, we will get one. On the coming edition of the Center of the Universe, we will receive an update to both Brian Cage and Jeff Cobb after their brutal, unsanctioned match. Who knows what that update will have, but we'll find out later on this week. But right now, folks, we'll take you to earlier today, when I had the opportunity to have a quick interview with Asuka. Alaska, well, thank you for taking the time here before SmackDown goes on the air. I'm sure you're deep in preparation and thought right now for your contest here this evening with Nikki Cross. I kind of really only have one question for you, and that's... Do you have any real thoughts on what's going on here? I mean, you and Nikki Cross didn't have any problems with one another heading up to the Rumble. But it seems as if tonight you're going to go at each other's throats. Simple but effective from the Empress towards her opponent. This is going to be a fight. Get ready for it, folks. We have not seen this woman on SmackDown in a number of months. A multi-time SmackDown Women's Champion at that as well. Nikki Cross is ready. The Scottish psychopath is ready to head towards the ring to do battle with Asuka. They've done battle in the ring and out of it. They met at the Rumble, and Nikki Cross, for 
literally no reason that I can find. Went straight after Asuka, assaulted her before, the, before she even got into the match in the Women's Royal Rumble last Sunday. Now here we are here tonight as we saw on, on SmackDown, the fight spilled on and continued backstage at the Royal Rumble at Minute Maid Park. And now here tonight, it's going to fight in the ring. They're going to go at it between those ropes and it is going to be one hell of a fight as well. If these two women's past and their accolades are anything to go off of, this is going to be one to remember. That is for absolute certainty. Could we be looking at the female equivalent of Jeff Cobb and Brian Cage about to go to war here tonight? And if that's the case, I'm certainly not going to complain at all. Or whatever the case may be, we hear from Asuka here this evening. Short, simple, and effective. Cross struck first. She strikes last. Get ready, because here comes the Empress. Asuka is ready for this one. She's been wanting this one. And they are about to go head first into battle with one another, however they may see fit. This is going to be a good fight. San Jose is certainly looking forward to it as well. The Empress has her eyes focused here on the battle to come with Nikki Cross. And Nikki Cross charging out of the ring. Cross going straight after Asuka. Nikki Cross didn't wait a second. And it's just how it was at the Rumble. Cross assault to Gasca before she could even make it into the ring. The fight is on between these two and that bell hasn't even sounded. Are we surprised this is the case at all though between these two? Asuka dumps Cross down on the, the padding on the outside here and stomps away onto the former SmackDown Women's Champion. This is what we came to see. This is what we expected. We do not know why this is the case. I'm sure Asuka doesn't either, but she's not going to say no to a fight with Nikki Cross. Forearm in the face now, and the fight is on between these two women. Down on the ramp there, on the steel, Asuka lands. Nikki Cross now, look out to Asuka. Oh, into the steel steps. Oh, the bell has even sounded in this one. They are going at each other's throats here. And it's Nikki Cross right now who has Asuka in control before she even had a, an attempt to get her entrance attire off. We are in the ring though. The bell has sounded. There it is. The match is underway between these two women. And still, Nikki Cross is all over Asuka. And the rumble repeats itself. Nikki Cross with a crossbody. Spills them to the outside over the top rope. In the same part of the outside where they fell after they were both eliminated from the rumble. And the count begins from Jessica Carr, but the fight has only just begun on the outside. It is all Nikki Cross right now. Asuka has been on the receiving end of Onslaught for a while. But here we go. Asuka finally fighting back. Sending her into the apron, Asuka now has the opportunity in front of her to capitalize. Here we go, lifting cross up to her feet, spinning back fist, and now into the ring post goes Nikki Cross, not once, but twice. Jessica Carr is up to seven here, and these two women haven't paid a blind bit of attention to the count at all. The only bit of attention they may have paid is when the bell rung, but even then, maybe not because they're still fighting. Jessica Carr counting on here. She is up to nine now. And hang on a minute. They are going nowhere near the ring. They're going further away from it. They're fighting into the crowd. Jessica Carr has no choice but to call for the bell. These two women staring at each other. Jessica Carr had no choice there. But it doesn't matter to these two. Because the fight has continued on. They're still going at it. In the crowd now. The rumble is repeating itself between these two women, Cross and Asuka, in the crowd here at San Jose. And we all can just watch on right now. Jessica Carr is powerless to stop this one. Asuka and Cross, again, we don't know why, but they are at each other's throats as much as they can. And hang on now, Sasha Banks. 
As Oscar and Cross continue to fight, God, Sasha Banks, the woman who made started at number two in the Women's Royal Rumble. Banks has just grabbed the microphone. What is the boss doing now? Oh, Sasha Banks is not happy about last Sunday. And if you can read between the lines, you know who this message is about. The next time they're north of the border, Sasha Banks wants to stand face to face with her. Sasha Banks wants payback. And I think you know who that's to as well. Well, while we might not be in Canada next week, there is plenty to look forward to on SmackDown. Ladies and gentlemen, we can reveal Sonya Deville will go one-on-one -on -one against the SmackDown Women's Champion, Shayna Baszler. Of course, we also have the Battle Royal to come next week as well. The competitors will be revealed later on this week, but we can also reveal the EC3 and MJF will be in the building next week as well. Perfect! We'll be on SmackDown once again. Plenty to look forward to for next week. But now, it's time for San Jose to bask in his glory. It is time for our big fight main event here in the SAP Center. It is time to see who is going to King of the Ring. Hangman Page wanted this. HBK offered him the qualifier, and he said, fine, give me Keith Lee. And here we are. It's a new time for Keith Lee. As he said it earlier himself, what he was brought in for is not why he is here now. Now he's here to write his own legacy, to carve his own path. And it starts with becoming the Limitless King. It starts with the Hangman here tonight. We know, of course, that as we saw on Raw earlier this week, it will be Juice Robinson and Pete Dunne so far declared for King of the Ring. Who will join them, though? It will be interesting to see. Both men certainly deserve an opportunity at the King of the Ring. There's no doubt about it. But only one of these fantastic competitors is going to get it. Hangman Page, as you saw last week, his frustrations had got the better of him. He had wanted so, so badly to be the Royal Rumble winner. He was in there from number two, and he was still in there when we were about to get into the 20s. He eliminated himself, overcooked it, trying to eliminate Shinsuke Nakamura. And with it, the Hangman went to the outside as well. It was, it was honestly almost heartbreaking to see because Hangman had put in a fantastic performance. He had been in the ring for as long as Seth Rollins at that point. But at the end, it was him who went over the top rope with Shinsuke Nakamura. It was only the Hangman who cost himself any opportunity of going to the main event of WrestleMania. We saw his frustrations last week. HBK tried to calm him down, but it seems that this is the only way that the Hangman is going to relieve any stress and even then, I don't think a therapist is going to diagnose stepping into the ring with Keith Lee as a good option for relieving stress. But here we go. The bell sounds and the main event is underway here in San Jose. It is Keith Lee and Hangman Page who is going to King of the Ring. Oh, Hangman will strike first. A discus forearm. Keith Lee didn't budge. Not a movement from Keith Lee there, and the fight is on now between these two. Go behind the tempted from Keith Lee. Hangman Page comes up the counter, forearm into the back now. Hangman at a disadvantage, shorter than Keith Lee, and certainly giving up at least 60 pounds 
Otter Keithley as well. And let's see what will happen here in this contest between these two men. Keithley demonstrating supreme power already. Brings him up to his feet on the shoulders with ease. Samoan drop drives him into the mat. Hangman Page wanted to try and start this match off hot. He went for the discus forearm and now he is ruining his own mistake. Oh no. Hangman trying to get out of the grasp here. Oh! Tactically thought out there from the Hangman. He was in big trouble but went for the legs of the big man. And look at that now. The opening is there. Hangman Page targeting the legs of the big man here. Of course, that's not to get Keith Lee off his feet. But remember, Keith Lee is a true one-of-a-kind individual. He has absolutely fantastic athleticism. Out of this world, what he can do with his body. And the Hangman is going after the legs here. Not once, but twice he went after him. And now look at that, a stop down on the leg there. He is targeting the legs here of Keith Lee. Trying to ground him, trying to take away his speed, his athleticism. And more importantly, for the Hangman's case, his power. Big right hand there. Oh, but Keith Lee just using his power in his upper body to stop that and turn about. Tit for tat. As he connects with the shin breaker there onto the hangman. Look out now. Hangman page sent into the corner. Keith Lee counter there. Good counter made by the hangman as well. Big boot. Keith Lee doesn't even come off his feet though. Oh, but hangman, I think tactically there, and he did so. Sweeps the legs again and goes after the knee of Keith Lee. Can't knock him for it. It's sound. Oh, wait a minute though. Brutal stops there. From Hangman Page onto the legs of Keith Lee there. There's a difference between kind of. I don't know. There's a difference between working on the legs and just assaulting your opponent here. And these two men respect each other, remember, but. That was a bit too far from the hangman in my eyes for someone you respect and Keith Lee is giving him a receipt right now. Look at the strength to connect that power slam. Hangman Page's back must be screaming out but the rope save him on that occasion there. So says Jessica Carr anyway. Moves out of the way the attempted kick there. Hangman roll up from behind, roll up from behind. Is he going to kick of the ring? Yeah. He is not even going to get a count of two on that one. Both went up to a vertical base, his super kick, and it takes him down. Hangman Page now, top rope. Can he foresee something big incoming? Yes, he can. Moonsault! Beautiful moonsault as well. Hooks the leg. Is it enough? Keith Lee kicks out at two. Big kick out as well there from the limitless Keith Lee. But Hangman Page with the biggest move of the match so far in my opinion. And the opening is really there now. Hangman doing everything he can to overcome the disadvantages that he has. And using them to try and turn the tide against Keith Lee. He has got the offense going. Oh my goodness. Just tried to sweep the leg away from underneath Keith Lee there. And Lee acted like nothing happened. Those tree trunk legs did not even feel the impact. And Keith Lee is back now. Uh oh, chin lock. Yes, snap mirror into a chin lock. You're locked in. Hang on, page in trouble. Only for a few seconds, it has to be said. Keith Lee. Cannot keep the hangman grounded there. But oh, a big right hand will rock him. Hangman Page comes back with a body blow here. Here we go now, hangman. Go and tip for Tara Keith Lee as best as he can here. Body blows there onto Keith Lee. Why not target the gut? It's a good idea. Try and take the breath away from the big man. Again, he tries to swipe away at the big legs of Keith Lee. But he's able to hang on in there. Keith Lee, though, can't hang on in there against those devastating stomps on hangman Adam Page. to his feet now what could we see here oh body blow counter there a lot of body shots here in this matchup from these two men their ribs are not going to be enjoying them and that certainly is the same case for hangman page taking that Samoan drop which almost brought his hopes of going to king of the ring to an end
up, and now it's Keith Lee who has Hangman Page right where he wants him. Devastating headbutt, but the Hangman comes right back there. Nicely done indeed. Kick in the gut, chop in the chest. It is just strikes now for the Hangman, and he is damn good at him as well, even if Keith Lee is staying up on a vertical basis. Irish whip off the ropes. Keith Lee just ran down Hangman Page. Lee didn't even do a move. Hangman just ran into him. Big boot though. Hangman doing what he can here. More than just targeting the legs. I think he's realized that he needs more than just that if he wants to beat Keith Lee. He has to think of everything he can. Up his arsenal. Another beautiful moonsault from the Hangman. Oh, but... He is going back to those legs. Wait a minute, no, lifts some up. Sharpshooter! Sharpshooter! A sharpshooter locked in here by the hangman. Keith Lee, a long way from the ropes, trying to crawl. Jessica Carr asking him if he wants to submit. Keith Lee crawls down. Almost halfway across the ring, crawled his way to the ropes and gets the break. Look at this now, Hangman going aggressive again, stomping away relentlessly at Keith Lee there. Into the turnbuckle we go, Hangman Lariat misses. Keith Lee, belly to belly. And a big time elbow drop follows as well. What are we gonna see now, Keith Lee. Off the ropes, or no, over the ropes, oh, the Hangman on the apron, he's in trouble, wait a minute, Hangman, shoulder in the gut, flips over, sunset flip, sunset flip, could he get him here, middle of the ring, oh my, it's only good enough for one, Keith Lee with the shoulder up at one, the Hangman taking a moment to tell himself, did that really happen, here we go, off the ropes, Hangman, caught, no, rolls through, drop toe hold, great counter there from the Hangman, Keith Lee, lines it up, no way, look at the strength, right on passage, one, two, go, San Jose rising to their feet there, they thought he had him beat, incredible work from the hangman to get him up, but even better from Keith Lee to kick out in time. Oh, but the Hangman ain't happy now. The anger within Hangman that we saw last week is shining through again here. And even San Jose doesn't like it. I can hear audible boos going the way of the Hangman here. That kick out has really changed the demeanor of the hangman now. He was looking at this fight. He was fighting in this one. Now he's got a, I don't know, there's a different attitude to him. There's a different body language. There is a look on the hangman's face as if to say, why are you still in this? How are you still in this? And the hangman is not happy, not one bit, as he goes after the legs again here of Keith Lee. It's a sound tactic, there's no doubt about it. I'm certainly not knocking him for targeting the legs, that's a great strategy, but what I will knock him for is the disrespectful way that he is assaulting Keith Lee afterwards. Look out here, oh, spurs it to the outside! Hangman Page put it all in that lariat there and took himself over the top rope with it. Deja vu for the Hangman, but Keith Lee in huge trouble on the outside. Into the ring post he goes. That right up past it. Oh my, oh my God. Keith Lee just fires right back at the hangman. You think this man is down and then suddenly he just finds a way back. Oh no, oh no. Keith Lee is going to the top rope. Lee is up on high, and Hangman Page is in big trouble in the ring. Keith Lee from the top rope, Harakarada! 
Incredible work from Keith Lee. But the hangman still kicks at it too. Still, it is not enough for victory here for the hangman. For, for, sorry, for Keith Lee. But the hangman, he's coming back. Oh, face first into the mat. There goes Keith Lee. This has been an incredibly tough contest for Keith Lee thus far. Had to do so much to try and overcome Hangman Page here. Whether or not he underestimated him, I don't know. But the Hangman has had a sound game plan for the most part. Going after those legs of Keith Lee as best as he can. Look out now. Oh, brings it back. Nicely thought out there from the Hangman. Drop toe hold. Hang on now. Hang on. He's lining him up in the corner. He's looking for the buckshot lariat. Hangman Page. Back shot. Lariat! San Jose on their feet! The leg is hooked! One, two, three! No! First and right of passage! And now the buckshot Lariat! Keithley is kicked out of the boat! And Hagman Page can't believe it! Oh, look at this now. Hangman Page, he's, he has snapped you. And the boos are raining out here in the building. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, come on, Hangman. There's no need to do this. There is no need for this. Hangman Page has removed the top turnbuckle here. That pent up rage that we saw last week is showcasing itself again. Oh! Lee sent head first into the turnbuckle run and it's about to go from bad to worse incoming from the hangman Keith Lee moved out of the way Lee moved out of the way Hangman's rage was his own undoing a mood song for the top row Hangman was desperate to beat him. So desperate that he went underhanded. And it failed. Spirit bomb from Keith Lee. Hangman Page driven into the mat. Keith Lee was down, but he was never out. Rolls him over. Hooks the leg. Keith Lee is going. The King of the Ring! Hangman was willing to try everything, everything to beat Keith Lee, but he went into the turnbuckle. His senses were knocked out of him, and the spirit bomb brought his own undoing about him. We may not have expected this fight, but what a main event we had here in San Jose. And it ends with Keith Lee, your winner. The Limitless One is going to King of the Ring.